You know how they say money makes the world go round? Well, it's true. Since the beginning of time, people have used some sort of currency to buy and sell things. Long gone is the time when people would do and make things for one another without the expectation of getting something in return. Because as communities grew, the need to regulate, exchange and trade with some sort of currency emerged. From the barter system to the current form of cash currency that we use today, in this video, I'll be giving you a roundup of the history of money to see how it all started and where it's headed. According to scientists, patterns of exchange and trade within human beings have first been recorded during the Upper Paleolithic period, which is about 40,000 years ago. This is when groups of hunters would trade their tools and weapons with one another, depending on their needs. The process was called bartering, where one party would directly make a deal with the other one. So while convention of money came much later, humans have always used some form of currency to exchange buy and sell goods and services. This barter system holds the credit for bringing tons of diverse communities together and of course starting what would then go on to become social hierarchies where people with more resources to use as currency would be on the top of the food chain. The earliest form of currency was objects from nature. People would often use rare items like shells, meteorites, native copper, native iron, obsidian, amber, silver, and of course gold as units of value for exchange and trade. And when that wasn't an option, people also used livestock and produce as currency. So you see, nothing was really off limits. As long as someone else wanted it, you could use anything to make your deals, making the barter system very convenient. But at the same time, it would take a lot of time for these transactions to be carried out, because of course, some of these arrangements took time, so naturally a need for some new kind of system emerged, despite the global popularity of the barter system. In China, people went from using actual objects to small replicas of the same objects cast in bronze, which is the first time humans thought of using objects that we might now recognize as coins. However, the first actual region in the world to produce physical currency such as coins was in Europe in a region called Lydia. The first ever record of physical currency emerged sometime around 600 BC with the Mesopotamian shekel. The process of manufacturing these coins was called minting and this was the world's first official coin currency made of electrum, a natural mixture of silver and gold. These coins were stamped with different pictures to represent different values or as we now call them denominations. These coins were first used to pay armies but quickly became a widely used form of currency all over the globe because of their convenience. This form of money was called commodity money because its value was directly attached to the precious metals that these coins were made of. Coinage went on to become one of the most successful forms of commodity money because of their portability, durability and ease of production which included minting and smelting. Other forms of wealth and money such as cows successfully served pastoral societies but weren't easy to transport and of course were susceptible to ecological disasters which is why most people in the world switched over to coins. It was during this time when money actually started becoming a tool of social and political control where governments started taxing people to support their armies. Money also improved relationships between countries that started exchanging currency for goods and services benefiting both sides with money as a way of keeping record of the way countries and governments exchanged goods and even information. After that, we move on to 700 BC when the world started transitioning to paper currencies as we now know it. During this time, China had pretty great control over their money supply, which not only included cash, but also included their very own form of paper currency with various denominations. While parts of Europe were still using coins as their primary form of money, the Song Dynasty in China laid down the foundations of paper currency. These notes were exchangeable for coin-based money and could be exchanged between individuals. And while this currency had to be discontinued after a while due to inflation, the Chinese government then printed notes called Huizi in their own printing houses. Each note was about the size of a sheet of an A4 paper and consisted of a copper plate printed pastoral scene with pictures of coins and a warning to counterfeiters underneath. 
Printed notes were embellished with a handwritten denomination and red ink stamped of authenticity. Slowly, banks started using paper currencies and people started carrying notes around as opposed to coins. These notes were of course still backed by coins and could be taken to the bank anytime and exchanged for their value in silver or gold metal coins. In terms of its operation, paper currency back then worked pretty much like it does today where people could use it to buy anything that they needed. However, the only difference is that this money was issued by banks and not governments, which made it really hard to regulate. And this is why the European government thought it would be a smart idea to issue their very own paper currency in their colonies. This shift to paper money increased international trade and the first currency market was created about 500 years ago in Amsterdam where people and banks exchanged currencies, helping stabilize their rates. From Amsterdam, Forex or foreign exchange trades throughout the whole world were initiated where people could convert one currency into another. Around 240 years ago, in 1875, the gold standard was introduced. The gold standard was a monetary system where a country's paper currency was backed by gold. With the gold standard, most countries agreed to convert paper money into a fixed amount of gold. A country that uses the gold standard would set a fixed price for gold and would buy and sell gold at that price. While this definitely allowed more control over paper currency, the physical quantity of gold all over the world just wasn't enough to keep the money flowing. Which is why, with World War I, people realized that the world needed something flexible to base the global economy on. And that's where fiat money comes in. Fiat money is government-issued currency that is not backed by physical commodity, such as gold or silver, but rather by the governments that issue it. Most modern currencies use this fiat model, allowing banks greater control over money and how much of it is produced. And since this type of money isn't limited by exhaustible resources like gold, it gives governments greater flexibility to manage their own currency, set their own policies, and stabilize or destabilize global markets. Now, while paper money is still the primary form of currency that we currently use, the 21st century has given rise to forms of virtual currencies and mobile payments that have made the process much easier than it was in the past. The first universal credit card was introduced in 1950, and since then, making and receiving payments has become a seamless process. With things like credit and debit cards, along with electronic payments using phones and computers, we have now moved into the digital era of currency, with services like PayPal, Google Pay, and Apple Pay making their way into the mainstream, there has been a huge shift in the way people receive and use money. To top it all off, Digital money has also seen a rise with the introduction of blockchain currencies like Bitcoin which was created in 2009 by an anonymous programmer called Satoshi Nakamoto. The great thing about these cryptocurrencies is that the currency is not issued by a central bank and is not regulated, though a decentralized network of computers keeps track of transactions. Users of Bitcoin are anonymous and can only be identified by their digital wallet IDs. The value of Bitcoin is determined by a process called mining where people solve complex mathematical problems to verify transactions using really strong computers. While virtual currencies have no physical coinage, they have slowly started entering mainstream markets because of their convenience and decentralized systems which offer holders more control and anonymity. As we move into the future, one thing is for sure. Money is perhaps the only medium of exchange that allows people to live. Whether it's bartering, coins, paper money, or now digital currency, Money is personal and impersonal, impacting the way we interact with each other on individual and collective levels. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video through. I had a lot of fun researching the topics and ideas that I had in this video. I'm curious to see how many more topics and ideas I can come up with to research and hopefully share with you guys in a very entertaining and easily understandable way. So if that's something that you're curious to see what else I have in store, I welcome you to join me on this journey. Thank you.